Hey, Captain Nate here, and we're in beautiful Panama City, Florida. And you may notice, uh, if you've tuned in before to Guides Tales, you may notice uh, some of this stuff looks familiar in the background. And that's because this is one of my favorite places to fish on the planet. This is called Redfish Point. Here in a little while, we're gonna take you along for a ride and we're gonna do some big bull red fishing. So stay tuned and uh, we'll see you guys soon. fishing partner my whole life growing up uh, for the most part was my little brother. Um, he's always been my best friend. He's been my right hand man on the boat for years and years and years as kids. Hey what's up everybody? I'm Captain DJ Chanel. When we were growing up after we moved from England and we actually moved into Florida um, we, we went to Tyndall Air Force Base which was absolutely amazing. We lived in a neighborhood that was kind of off back into the cut. It was literally a hundred yards from the water so we'd get out of school and we just you know, load us up a couple lures, uh, some hooks, a couple weights, and a cast net, and a bucket, and some fishing poles, and we trot down to the water, just just wave fish around, walk around, and and just catch whatever was biting. It didn't really matter to us what it was. Yeah, man, it's so awesome to be back on the base. Let's go check this out down here. Sure. This is, uh, you know, we lived right around the corner over there in uh, Felix Lake Housing, and me and my brother used to ride our bikes down here with our, you know, it was simple back then. We'd just bring one pole, a little bait bucket, and a cast net, and we'd just ride our bikes all through the woods out here. And, uh, you know, just hop from bayou to bayou. Each, each little piece of the water out here had a little trail that you can get down to it. And, I mean, you know, this was 25 years ago, and you hardly ever saw anybody out here. It's the last time you were here, 25 years ago? Well, on, yeah, on any section of the base right here, these roads, it's, it's so wild. Locked it off already. I used to drive all the way down there. It used yeah. to be like a little... Yeah, yeah you can this. walk, yeah, you walk, you walk right into yeah, the, You walk right back right down back there. there. So one of the really cool things about growing up on Tyndall Air Force Base prior to 9-11 was the fact that our parents, they did not want us being in the house. And it was a safe enough environment where they could just tell us, get out, don't come back for a while, we'll see you next week. So during the summertime, me and my brother would spend a lot of time, we'll pack up the tents and we'll load up the truck and we'll come down here to one of the many beautiful uh, salt flats that we have around uh, Tyndall Air Force Base and we'll pitch our tent in the background and uh, set up camp. We'll bring us a little grill, we'll go catch some bait and we'll wade flats all day long. Whatever the day held, that's what dinner was that night. Wow, what look at beautiful how place. beautiful this is. Man, um, I've missed this. This is one and this place right here is very near and dear to my heart. This is Redfish Point. It's a beautiful, beautiful section of Tyndall Air Force Base that uh, me and my brother have had the pleasure of fishing for the better part of the last 25 years. Um, it's one of the first places I learned how to, uh, you know, to artificial lures for breadfish, speckled trout. Um, we'd come out here and we'd live bait fish for mangrove snappers and red snappers and groupers just right here off the beach. Um, a lot of yeah. cast nets thrown down this beach. That's right. <laughs> a lot of chasing him down with a bucket, trying to make sure you get them all in there. That's right. Oh man. We worked hard for it back then. We it did. wasn't always so easy where we could just pull up and pancake 200 baits at once. You know? Yep. Yeah, so if you guys have seen any of our shows in the past, Guides Tales or whatnot, you may recognize some of these flats here. Um, we, these are, this is a great area to fish for a variety of different types of species. So this is stuff that we frequent on a regular basis. And, uh, you know, 
it's going to be no different this afternoon we're going to go and try to catch us some big bull redfish and all down that you can actually see back in the back where you've got these nice shallow sand pockets and that's the perfect type of environment where you're going to have these redfish just lining up waiting to uh to devour all of the bait fish coming off the flats so stay tuned and we'll see you soon don't miss it One of the only people that likes to fish as much as I do and my, one of my absolute favorite people to fish with on the planet is my little brother. Um, he's been walking around these flats with me, wade fishing for the better part of 25 years. And so luckily today, I'm gonna get the opportunity to bring him out on the boat with us. And we're gonna kind of introduce him to the other part of fishing that I get to do that he doesn't get to do so much of, which is, you know, we get to film and we get to be out here and enjoy all this stuff and share our passion for the outdoors and our area and the fishing with you guys at home. Today's agenda was supposed to be pretty nice. Uh, it was supposed to be a kind of a light northeast wind, so we decided to take the skiff, load the skiffs up, keep it real simple. We were just gonna go and kind of put around in some of these little backwater areas that we had fished for, for many, many different times throughout the years. You know, getting back to the little boats, it kind of, as soon as I get back on my skiff, it takes me right back to the days when we, that was all we had was little boats. So like I said, our plan was to go run up the bays a good way and go get into some of these backwater areas. Um, but nature, as she so commonly does, had her own plan for us. So we came around the point, got out into some open water. It was pretty choppy. So we decided to cut our trip in half and just kind of get down into some areas that were that were accessible and we weren't going to get get beat up too bad in the process. So today we just pulled out the little skiff, tried to keep things real, you know, simple and sweet, you know, a handful of different soft plastics. Uh, a couple topwater plugs, a uh, spoon or two, a little light tackle, you know, two poles or something each. Um, and then we just jumped on the skiff, put a little, you know, camera on there and just went and started bouncing around to a bunch of the old spots that we used to fish all the time. Um, and I said, now that we're, we're older and we're, we're able to have, you know, bigger boats, some of, the, some of the places that we used to fish that we grew up and fish, they're just a little harder to get into, so it's, it's always good having the little skiff around for us to just jump in there, uh, bounce around to some old stomping grounds, you know, catch, you know, juvie redfish and trout, you know, checking on pretty much the nursery that we have around this area. So it's always good to see, you know, smaller fish in the bay. You know, you can't always go out there and catch big, huge fish, but I mean, it's nice to see that we still have a good, solid, like hatchery that's, that's going on around the water. And, and I, I, like I said, it, it doesn't matter if it's a big fish, small fish, you know, what they call a trash fish, whatever. I mean, anything that's on the hook and it's pulling line and you're fighting, it's a good time. As time goes on and, and we, we grow and we turn into adults, we take on jobs and of course I kind of stayed pretty much in the fishing industry for the most part uh, throughout my adult life and my brother he kind of went a little bit different direction and got more into automotive and mechanics and various different things. So it's nice anytime that uh, I have a little downtime and even though you know he rarely has downtime, he's far busier than I am because he actually works. Um, it's nice whenever I get a, a couple hours in the morning, uh, especially on a weekday when there's nobody else on the water that I can uh, enjoy some time with my brother on the boat. Alright guys, nice little redfish. Nice little shad. Arkansas glow, little four inch. Small chick head. Nice 
nail. That's always pretty. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Juvenile East Bay Redfish. Yeah, buddy. Cool. Let's get a look. Awesome, man. Well, hey, listen, I know that you don't get a whole lot of time anymore to get out and fish. So, uh, yeah. you know, working all the time, I'm just glad that you were able to come and spend a couple hours this morning with me on the boat. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. It's, you know, it's always a good time. Cool stuff. I have just been really incredibly blessed over the years. Being part of a, coming from a military family, um, family has always been really important to me. My little brother is probably the most important person in my life. And uh, after him and after my mom and my dad and a handful of friends that I do have, this that you see around me right here, this is what's most important to me. Um, these beautiful, pristine waters, um, sort of the northern Gulf, the Panhandle, it's, and it's a really incredible area. And for me to have been fortunate enough to grow up around here um, and, and live this just as, you know, part of a journey that I was on with my own family at the time um, has been really exciting and really awesome. I'll tell you, this is really some, some of the best memories of my life and uh, things that I still reflect upon today, and, and it's those memories from back then that keep me excited about all the new adventures that, you know, of course, that me and my brother are gonna get to go on in the future and, I mean, just in general. <laughs> wow, look at this. Man, I'll tell it's you It's not what, there anymore. That storm really did a, did a mm. job over here. Yeah, this is pretty much where it all started. That's right, and still, still just the same beautiful view though. Yeah, I mean, just over the, Man, can't believe, uh, yeah. So, we were fortunate enough, you know, to grow up right here next to Shell Island in the background and all the fish you'd ever want to catch out here and just really, really epic views. And, you know, I'll be honest, to, to see it in such a devastating way is kind of, uh, you know, I'm kind of taken back. The last time I was here was, you know, 25 years ago yep. and we lived in a house that was right here. And, and it's not here anymore. Still got some uh, it's amazing, Christmas lights. Amazing what time will change. Mm -hmm. Man, look at that view though. Pretty tough, tough to be a kid, you know, a military brat and grow up with such a terrible view, right? What well, they had, we, we used to have like little storage sheds yeah, right we here. Did. And then it had like a little overhang, little with the post. That's post, right. Didn't you hit the Sunfire on the yeah, post? Yeah, that's right. I, I did it in my mom's <laughs> car in the post. When she first got, she got a, when we first moved here from England, my mom ordered, it was a 1995 Pontiac Sunfire. It was red and she had it shipped here. We flew in to Charleston, South Carolina and saw my grandpa. We picked up her car, we brought it here. And when I got my learner's permit, I was learning how to drive on a truck that my dad took to work. And my mom was like, hey, you can drive the car. And me not thinking about it, I'm going to back out and I'm just turning the wheel. And next thing you know, I catch the front fender on this pole and just dented it all in. And I was like, oh, terrible. But, you know, you live and you learn. Those are, those are the kind of things that, you know, they kind of shape, shape who you become over time, I guess. Man, I'm just like the memories coming back here and standing in this yes. place is just wow. And I mean, you know, from the other side, I go up and down this all the time. We film TV shows all up and down that section of beach over there. And uh, but to stand right here and look at it from this perspective again, it just brings back it brings back so many great memories. We go walk down here to the water and go take a look at it. Man, there's the dock right there, DJ. Yeah. A lot of good times on that dock. Mm -hmm. Man, could you imagine? I mean, what a view this is. I mean, how many yeah. places in Florida can you be, really, 
and just look out across the water like this and not see any buildings, Nothing. not see, I mean, it's, this is just pristine, 100% old Florida, the way it used to be. Yeah, this, 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 is, this is fantastic, man. After, after my dad retired, we ended up moving to Parker, pretty much right down the road. I got real passionate into working on cars. Nate stayed deep into, deep into the roots of fishing. And as we got older, I, I started developing more that, you know, I, I wanted to be on the water more. Like, I, I see him having so much fun, and he enjoys it so much. So that, that was a big pull for me to go and go ahead and get my captain's license to where I could start running trips whenever I was available. To, to be able to just sit here and enjoy going on the water, taking people out, and, and kind of, you know, following in his footsteps as far as what he does. He just, he has a great passion for it, man. He just loves it. And I, I really enjoy experiencing that with him. I mean, I feel that's a real close bond that we share. So it's, all, it's always good to have, you know, time out there on the water with my brother. Over the years, you know, we've caught lots and lots of great fish and, you know, but to be completely honest, it's never really been about the fish so much as it has been just being away from land and seeing a different side of the city. There's growing up here in high school, people all the time would tell me, you know, I can't wait to get out of here. Panama City sucks. There's nothing to do. And those people, unfortunately, I just don't feel like we're exposed to the, the Panama City that I know, which is not the roads, it's not the buildings, it's not the bars or the businesses. It's what's out here behind you. It's the water. You get away from land a little ways and you head off into East Bay and you go a couple of miles from the marina and there is no more houses. There is no more buildings. There's no more roads. It's just old Florida the way it used to be. And I hope um, that for many years to come, it continues to be like that. A lot of times what I like to do, and uh, it's something I've liked to do since I was a kid, was, uh, you know, we'll park the boats, we'll get out, we'll grab one ride, and we just kind of get simple. We'll go for a walk and, you know, we'll look around in the sand, we'll see fish laid up in potholes that we can throw at. Um, and it's just kind of a change of pace from being on the boat all day. This morning we're out here uh, fishing some sand flats back here behind Shell Island. And uh, it's a good high tide this morning. And the water temperature is just about perfect, right at about 82 degrees. And uh, we're, we just came out here. We decided to set up on this point. The water's going to start falling here pretty soon. And all these trout and redfish are going to kind of move up and uh, kind of stage on the back side of this point right here. As this water falls, we should be able to do pretty good. Get any bites? I did just have a pretty good some pick it up. But... Oh! Another little redfish. <laughs> hey now, buddy. He's making a mess. Oh, we got a double. Oh, we might be onto something now. That's not a bad fish. Not a bad fish. Double header trout, redfish. A little sampling of what? That's right. You know, we what we have to offer here. We had a pretty good day. Caught a bunch of redfish, a bunch of trout, all different sizes, and you know, these are just beautiful fish out here on this white sand. They get kind of that pink color. Yep. And. Uh, you know, take yeah. care of them. That's right. We'll turn them loose. And With all things, progress and growth is inevitable. Uh, that's uh, really another blessing that Tyndall Air Force Base is where it's at because 90% of the pristine shoreline around Bay County is, is part of Tyndall Air Force Base. And had that been in the hands of private citizens, then the city might look much, much different. You know, with that being said, it's just been really, really, really a great, great life having ended up here and being able to share it with all my friends and family and you out there and I just hope y'all get to enjoy it as much as I do.